ready. What happened? I, are we live? No, I think I haven't gotten a phone call yet. We never know. No. I just got a phone call. This is what we're waiting for. So if we oh. are live, mm -hmm. we're waiting for a phone take. call to say we yeah, are live. I just, no, said that you, it, I just got a notice that they were live. Oh, no, please back to me. Okay. So if we are live, you're you're live. live. You are. Okay, we're live. Ah! We don't know what's happening yeah. as always. And we start these things out because you see behind it is a full bar. So that's how we survive all of these Facebook lives. Because <laughs> right now we are on week 12. Okay, so we're on oh. week 12. Good evening, oh, everyone. Lord, good evening. 11. We light up tonight. What wonderful people we have and such good friends. And so excited to have everybody join us. So we are excited. And um, uh, like Judy said, week 12, oh. Facebook Live, our home to your home. Actually, it's week 12 and it's going to be, uh, for now, it's going to be our final week. Um, we may do a few of these over the summer, but we're going to, this is our last Friday night at 7.30. We think scheduled, but we are going to keep coming back. If, you know. Yeah, like maybe a few times over the summer, but right now, not every Friday night at 7.30. It's summertime. Even though people, you know, are still social distancing, it's beautiful. It'll be beautiful, and people will be outside, and and um, you know, it's summer. It'll be summertime, so still be careful, you know. though, people. Please, please. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Be please. careful, please. Um, okay, yeah, let's yeah. let's thank. Oh, I just heard I just, you look talking. I just heard a little I voice. Was, All right, that's the little <laughs> voice in my head. <laughs> yeah, we hear you talking. We hear you. Okay, so go ahead. Anyway, let's thank our sponsors, United Fidelity Bank, the Dick Carmel, and uh, the Hamilton County Reporter. Thank you so much. Yes. We always thank oh you for gosh. supporting us. Thank you. Supporting the arts, keeping the arts alive during this time. And uh, uh, so thank you very much. Uh, the lineup tonight is us, of course, and, uh, and, and Don, our associate, Don Farrell, and our fearless leader is back, Jim Riley. Yay! Yay. So Jim is back, Yay. and he's going to play some tunes on the piano. We're so happy. And we have two very, very special guests, but you will very find special. that out. Yes. Oh, very you won't say any? No. You're going to keep them? No, I'm going to not say any. Are you not going to say? No, I'm not. But why? I don't want to. Uh, all right. I'm very special. They're very special. All and right. so you'll find out who they are a little later on. Well, I don't know. So here's what we've been doing. Uh, for those of you who have tuned in for the first time, <laughs> God love you. Oh my God. I'm Cindy Collins. I'm Judy Fitzgerald. We're two of the co founders of Actors Theater of Indiana, along with our associate, Don Farrell. Um, we came here from New York, started the company in 2005, and uh, we are the resident professional theater company in Carmel at the Center for the Performing Arts. Our home is the Studio Theater. Uh, and uh, we will, well, let's real quick. Let me just tell you that our goal is to have uh, a 2020 20, 21 season. We have announced the season. Yeah. You can go to our Facebook page and check out the video and see what we'll be doing next next season. But we open with Always Patsy Klein right. uh, in September, followed by Lombardi about the famous Packers coach, Vince Lombardi. That's a play. Patsy Klein, of course, is a musical. Judy plays Patsy. Um, and then we go into The Big Bang. It's a crazy, hilarious show. Two guys, one piano. If you liked, our past shows of uh, uh, Murder for Two or The 39 Steps, you're, you're gonna love this one. It's like the history of the world with these two guys. And then we'll close with Damn Yankees because yep. we're gonna do it this season. Obviously it has been canceled because of COVID-19, but so we switched it to next season and I really hope we get to do it. So things are crazy as we all know, things are crazy, but we are really, really pushing forward to make this all happen. Yeah, and it might be a little different. The season might yeah. be a little different. Uh, seating, seating might be a little different. The right. venue might be a little different, but we are going to do a season. That's right. Yeah. But and and rules and regulations may uh, may have to be in effect. But you know what? It's going to happen. It's, it's it is. So anyway, so okay. thank you, thank you for your support, and we hope that you come out and see our new season. Um, okay. So what we've been doing these past few weeks is going through the history of ATI. And now we are on season. And our special guests are all part of that. Our special guests are hint, from hint, that season. Hint, hint. Big hint. <laughs> are from that season. So we are now going through 2010. And the shows in 2010 were Nonsense, A Grand Night for Singing, and the play Rounding Third. 
three shows. Because in the beginning, you know, you could think that was only our fifth year, and we were still just doing three. Wow, and we were just and we were just holding water. I mean, we were we were we were waiting to get into the we're waiting for this time. That's right, waiting for yeah. that center to be built. So for this season, we were actually in Clay Terrace and the storefront. In the storefront. I mean, seriously, like in a dressing room. <laughs> it was like for retail. Like, yeah. I mean, seriously, it was crazy. Right? But we were lucky to have it. Um, right. Actually, we were we were renting it. Yeah, uh, we were renting it from the Carmel Community Players. That's right. Uh, and we were renting it from them. Yeah, thank you. They were very people. kind to us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And so we got to do three shows there. Um, and and then we moved it to the Center. 2011. We that was our first uh our first time. So when we come back, theater. we'll do that and have somebody lift the high leg for Chicago. Sure. That was when we did Chicago, <laughs> and I'll be doing the big old high kick. Okay. Um. So <laughs> so a grand night for say no nonsense. Sorry. Nonsense was first, and the cast in that was uh, Katie Gentry, right. Deborah Babbage, yep. Kyra Kenyon, All right. uh, 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 Claire Wilcher, Michaela Reed, and Michaela Reed. Five women. The, that's there. There are five nuns in Nonsense. Our musical director was uh, Nathan Perry for that, and uh, the band is right on stage for that show. If you know that show, it's, it's so much fun, and that was a great cast. Yep, great. Right. And they great really, time. I think, all those women had a really, really good time together. And then we did a brand night for singing, which uh, the three of us were in, Don, Judy, and myself were in that show with uh, Jill Amalia and Bradley Reynolds, five people in that as well. And that is the music of Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein. And it really is a real kind of neat review because- it's incredible, they mix everything up. Because and, they yeah. take their music and they do Rogers and Hammerstein in all different types of styles and arrangements. Really, it's really fun, really and, cool. and, and and it is. It's a big learning experience. Like you know, there were no harmonies and stuff like that. It's different than we're not used to hearing. Yeah, For you because you had some hard harmonies, you right? Because she always sings a melody. I got off easy. Yeah, she gets off easy. Melody. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're I, can't, gonna, I can't give away our later guests, but I was going to say she had a tougher <laughs> journey than you. Oh man, she had the hardest times. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, she did. So thank you. Um, well, you're not giving me away. Jill O'Malley was in the show. You're I know, but you, you're trying to not. Oh, I'm not going to hang where it gets her. Okay, so oh, anyway, sorry. we're going to sing a song. Oh, I just totally gave it away. I'm, I'm we're going to we're gonna sing a song. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. We're going to sing a song from A Grand Night for Singing. This was actually a trio in the show, but since it's just Judy and I, we're going to do it as a duet, and it is uh, Many New Day, kind of mi mix up with Wash That Man Right Out of My Hair from South Pacific, and Amy Day was from Oklahoma, and so I think we're going to do trivia this week. Wait, before we sing, I think oh. we're going to do trivia this week. So just um, keep in mind, just pay attention, time. just pay attention, and and Don will give you the trivia question. Okay, uh, we have to run it. I don't have my techie. Lizzie is in here tonight, so my little techie can't run this. So I'm running it, and I'm passing it. I hope we do all right. Ready? <laughs> Watch the woman who is healthy and strong Walk her like a baby if her man goes away A weeping and a wail and how he's done her wrong That's one thing you'll never hear me say Never gonna say that the man I lose Is the only man among men I'll smack my fingers to say no care I'll buy me a brand new dress to wear I'll scrub my neck and I'll brush my hair and start all over again. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair and set him on his way. I'm gonna wave that man right out of my arms. I'm gonna wave 
jazz take. Anyway, so that was from a brand night for singing the music of Rodgers and Hammerstein. Now we're going to pass it off, as I said, to our fearless leader. He's back with us again this week. We're very happy he is um, making it a great finale yes. for us, Mr. James Ryan. Mr. B! Hey, Mr. B! We love you! Hey, ladies. I always have a hard time following you guys. It's, you know, it's, a, brand, <laughs> oh, it's a tuxedo oh, yeah. brown... It's that tuxedo brown shoe thing. I have a hard time with that. Oh, yeah. oh you're very kind. <laughs> back in, uh, my first song tonight will be an Irish song. Uh, back in 1953, John Ford uh, went to Ireland to film uh, a movie called The Quiet Man. And if you haven't seen it, it's probably the best Irish movie I've ever seen. It starred John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara. And all through, the, all through the movie, this particular song plays and Maureen O'Hara plays on the piano in her Irish cottage. And I thought I'd play it for you tonight. The Isle of Innisfree. <laughs>
I hope you enjoyed that. Now I'm going to turn it over to our co-founder and good friend, Don Farrell. Don? Hey, way to go, Mr. B. You love those glissandos up and yeah. down, man. You yeah, go do. at it. <laughs> I love it, man. You got a great flair with your playing. Great flair. Thank you so much, <laughs> buddy. You. You're so Thank good. You. Hey, you guys, uh, Don Farrell, uh, co-founder ATI and uh, Actors Theater of Indiana, the resident professional theater company at the Center for the Performing Arts. Come be alive from our homes to yours. And uh, it's good to see you all this evening, virtually, of course. And um, yeah, we're going through our 2010 season. And uh, Judy and Cindy already talked about some of that. And uh, we've got, I, 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 of course, went to the archives. So I pulled out some, you know, here, here we, had a, we had rounding third. This was the play that we did. There's Nick Carpenter and, and Roger Ortman. These two guys are great actors, wonderful actors here in Indianapolis. And a wonderful play uh, by Richard Dresser. I got to direct them in that at the, at the uh, Carmel Community Playhouse at Clay Terrace. At the time, Carmel Community Playhouse was, was in Clay Terrace and we were renting it from them until the center was born, was, was born or built. And then of course um, we have a grand night for singing. This is the one we were doing. We're doing a lot of songs from uh, good old Rogers and Hammerstein. Beautiful stuff. Love that. And then, of course, they had already mentioned about nonsense. Yeah, that was so much fun. They are so 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 many talented people here in uh, in the central Indiana area. So I'm going to do a song. Uh, my first. I'm going to do one or two. Uh, this one is from the good old uh, 1949 musical South Pacific, with music by Richard Rogers and music uh, the, the lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein the second and and the book, the playwright uh, between Oscar Hammerstein and Joshua Logan. So uh, great, amazing uh, what Rogers and Hammerstein did. Uh, Pulitzer Prize for drama that year, 1949 is when they opened it. And so, all right, I'll quit talking and here's my first one. All right. in my heart one love to be living for one love to be living for this merely was mine one girl for my dream one partner in paradise, this promise of paradise, this nearly was mine. Close to my heart she came, only to fly away. Only to fly as day flies from morning. Now, now I'm alone, still dreaming of paradise, still saying. That paradise once nearly was mine. So clear and deep are my fancies of things I wish were true. I'll keep remembering evenings I wish I'd spend with you. I'll keep remembering kisses from lips I'll never own and all the lovely adventures that have never known. Now, now I'm alone, still dreaming of paradise, still saying that 
that paradise once nearly was mine. South Pacific. Ah, Emile de Beck. Beautiful lyrics, beautiful melody, and so much passion and uh, longing. Um, you know, they were really, really far ahead of their time. Remember, that, that, that was uh, one of their, that's early on in their career, really. I mean, Oklahoma was one of the very first, was the first one they did a big success, and, and this one, South Pacific, 1949. They were way, way ahead of the curve as far as what they were really pushing the envelope. I love that about Oscar and Hammerstein. A lot of us just take them, you know, hey, but you know, Oscar and Hammerstein, good workhorses of the American musical theater uh, canon. But, you know, 1949, think about where we were as a country at that time. And, and they had, of course, if you guys are familiar with South Pacific, you also it takes place in South Pacific during World War II in one of the islands down in South Pacific. And, and there is a, a U.S. Uh, Marine, uh, all-American guy, uh, Lieutenant Cable, who comes over and he's on his way to do a, a secret mission. And, and then he meets uh, Bloody Mary, who is a Tonkinese, and uh, this is uh, Polynesian. And, um, and Bloody Mary introduces Lieutenant Cable to his, her daughter, her beautiful daughter, um, Liat. And, uh, and, uh, and Cable falls in love with Liat. And so, you know, here we are pushing the pushing the uh, the boundaries a little bit. 1949, of uh, uh, interracial uh, romanticism and and also um, being able to uh, acceptance of of people uh, of different races and and seeing each other as 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 uh, all one humanity. And um, you know, later on in the in the play. Uh, Lieutenant Cable, he uh, he, uh, with Emile de Beck, and and Emile de Beck is asking him. He said, "Well, why is it that you're so, you you have such prejudices?" And Lieutenant Cable tells him back that um, he has a kind of self-loathing about himself because he's he's so where what he's dealing with, and and he said, "You know, it's 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 not something you're born with." And then he goes on to sing this amazing song that really pushed the boundaries of American musical theater in 1949. And it's called, You've Got to Be Carefully Taught. And something I learned in college and all of us in, in the theater industry, when, we, when we're learning roles and songs and things like that, we take, our, take the song, because you can get lost in the lyric and the, or in, the, in the melody and the music, because it's so beautiful. But if you take all the music away and you just look at the lyrics and you do it as a monologue, you learn a lot about what the song's about and how to em em emphasize different things. And so I would just like to take this moment, just kind of tell, you know, tell you those lyrics that Lieutenant Cable told Emile de Beck. And the song goes, and you know, he asked how about prejudice? And he says, well, you, you're, you're, it's not something you're born with. And he said, uh, you've got to be careful, you've got to be taught to hate and fear You've got to be taught from year to year. It's, it's got to be drummed in your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are oddly made you, and people whose skin is a different shade. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught before it's too late, before you are six or seven or eight, you, to hate all the people your relatives hate. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be carefully taught. 1949, Oscar Hammerstein II, those lyrics, wow, huh? Very, uh, very ahead of its time. And of course, I'm, I'm talking about South Pacific. I'm just talking about South Pacific. Or am I? I don't know. Are you bringing it back to us, dude? <laughs> I'm now going to bring it back. Oh, yes. I know. They're so impatient. They're so impatient, my colleagues. I was getting, I'm getting ready to, and here we go. We're now, uh, now I'm transitioning out of South Pacific to talk about Judy and Cindy. And Judy and Cindy okay. are now, uh, they have a very special- 
important. Don't don't think I don't think it is, but that's what we're we're all um we want to make people happy. So that's what we want to do right now. So hi. Hi. Well, we have a very special guest with us tonight. Uh she is, we've known her for a very long time. And uh when very long, a really long time. Yeah. Uh she's from the Little Sisters of Hoboken. Yep. And uh, you know, I grew up in New Jersey. And I had to actually, for a while, um, I went to uh, this private school in <laughs> Hoboken yeah. for a little while. And, uh, and uh, we have on uh, our mother superior tonight. And uh, she was our teacher. Yeah, and she taught us too. Yeah. And my so, nose hurt from her. Well, yours did. Mine do. Yeah, mine did. Oh, what do you mean? Isn't that you. good? I oh, wasn't as bad I as you. Wasn't but, um, but I think she's on here. Mother superior? Are you there? Are you here? Can we put on Mother Superior? Can we see her? Oh, oh, I oh, oh, wait a minute. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa. Wait, sorry. Uh, we don't know who you are. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, wait a second. We're wait. looking for um, Mary, uh, Sister uh, Regina. Mother Superior? Wait, that's me. I. I, I am she of whom you speak. Uh, I am the party to whom you're speaking. I'm Mother Superior, Sister Mary Regina. And, and to whom, may I ask, am I speaking? Mother Superior, Mother Superior, Mother Superior, Mother Superior, Cindy Collins. The two Catholics from What? Church. What? Yes, trust me. Taught us. All these years, let me have a look at you. <laughs> you taught us, Mother oh, Superior. Oh, my. Well, Hi. Mr. Blaney Stored, <laughs> pinch my cheeks and call me Rosie. Oh, yes, indeed. Why, oh. it's it's Cindy and Judy. Oh, well, wonders ever never cease. Why, I remember the two of you so well. Well, you you both sat outside my principal's office more times than I could count. <laughs> Getting into more trouble, the two of you. Getting into more trouble than a postman in a yard full of pit bulls. <laughs> we don't recognize you. Where's your habit? Mother Superior, what? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> I'm spending my sunset years at a Caribbean resort. My cabana, get this now, my cabana faces a beach of a secluded island. Oh my God. Wow. Weird. What? Why? And you're probably wondering why I'm not in my old habit. Well, well, let's just say I've traded one habit for another, huh? Oh! <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh, Mother Superior, cheers. We know it's scary. We need to right? come around eventually. <laughs> and guess why we're at it? Let's celebrate our reunion. No better time for a toast, don't you think? Oh, okay. Here. Now, okay. Where, where are your drinks, ladies? Raise them high. Right Haven't I taught you better than that? Oh, right, oh, here. right here, right here. <clears throat> Go ahead. Here's to H E double hockey sticks. <laughs> May my stay there be as much fun as my way there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Mother Superior, you're 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 you, heaven bound. You are. I think you're heaven bound. Yes. Oh, you're heaven bound. Oh, 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 how you flatter me! Now you two, you already got passed oh. on to the next grade, so you don't have to flatter me. Hey, listen, oh. Mother Superior, are you by yourself down there? Uh, do you ever see yeah, any of the other sisters? You? Do you ever see any of the other oh, sisters? Well, you know, I, I do have the occasional visit from a fellow sister. Uh, as a matter of fact, Sister Mary Hubert is visiting with me now. You can't see her, though. She's out there riding the waves. She's surfing. Uh, but these days, I, I mostly keep time with my, my cabana boy, Rico. Oh, you've got to meet him. He's a darling. Rico! 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 Come, come and say hello to my two favorite students ever. You're still so using the clicker? Wait, no, You're still so using the clicker? Oh, yes. Of course, you betcha. Well, oh. if it ain't broke, don't fix it, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, that seems tricky. That, that, was, that was always your motto, I remember, back in school. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix it. Fix it. That's yeah. right, that's right. It's like your hip. <laughs> <laughs> don't fix it. That's <laughs> right. No need. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. I'm, I'm so glad it warms.
warms my heart, you know, to know that I've had an influence on your lives. Now, now uh, speaking of which, now, fill me in. What has happened to the two of you since uh, we last saw each other? Uh, well, we, um, we started a theater company. You'd be glad to know oh, that. Yes. Yeah. What's we started the Actors Theater of Indiana. We're in Carmel. Carmel. Oh, yeah. No. I'm sorry, I, I have to stop you there. I'm, I must admit, I'm a bit ashamed of you both. I, I thought I taught you better pronunciation and, and also a sense of geography, you know. I, I believe it's pronounced uh, uh, Carmel, you know, as in Carmel, California. Hmm? No, 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 that, you're right. There is a Carmel. Mother Superior, you are correct, as always. Yeah. There is a Carmel by the sea in California. We're Carmel. Caramel, like caramel by the corn. Indiana. In Indiana. Ah, uh, well, Two the tables like, have turned, haven't they? The student the has now become the teacher. Well, I don't know about that. You, I don't know. I don't Pardon know. Pardon me, I, 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 have to, I have to shed a tear. Pardon me. <laughs> oh, just one. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just ah, one tear. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> just one. Only one for the both of you. That's oh, all you get. You have to share it. Thanks. And now listen, what have you been doing? I mean, obviously, are you you're down there? You're in the Caribbean. I hope you're social. And distancing. you got a cabana. Hold on. I hope you're social distancing. Oh my gosh. Oh, of course I am. Six feet at all times, apart from me and anyone else. But you know, I I like that anyway. You know, even before this all happened, uh, you know, I appreciate being six feet from pe other people. You know, <laughs> <laughs> has has something to do with me not using deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> I've always, I never liked using deodorant. I, I do recall that. Uh, quite, <laughs> I do remember that. I do, um, quite vividly. Now, 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 ladies, uh, now, you know, I have to tell you though, now that my duties at the convent have lightened up a bit, uh, I, I have time to pursue. I'm, I'm so proud to admit this to my two uh, favorite former students, my lifelong ambition of becoming a stand up comedian. Oh, wow. Come on, give it to me. Wow. Let's hear it. All right, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Well, you know, I've, I've always loved the spot. Like, you, 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 you might remember that I, I sang that little ditty about it. I, um, I do. And I remember, I actually remember all of our assemblies. You'd open, oh, yes. you would always open with a song. And oh, you the tightrope. The tightrope. And that tightrope bit was <laughs> unbelievable. I like to think that I started you off on your great musical theater careers. Well, we yeah, do. We, yes, we, um, <laughs> we are appreciative of that. <laughs> I, well, you know, having been in my classroom, you, you know that I, I treat my lesson plan as, as if uh, it was more of a performance. You know, we weren't in a classroom. We were at a, a comedy club. So I, I, I figured it's about time I get my act together and take it on the road. Well, oh, as a matter of fact, uh, I, have, I have some new material. I, uh, 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 would you mind if I tried it out on you? Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> so what do you call a sleepwalking nun? Uh, I, I don't know. What do you call a sleepwalking nun? A Roman Catholic. <laughs> You're very good. Right on the you know what, Reverend Mother, you need, you need your cabana boy to do a ring shot for you. Oh, you know. You're, you're, a, you're a naturalette, though. I might have to take you with me on the road. Um, well, I wouldn't mind. That and and Judy can be my uh, roadie. Oh, good. I love that. Good. <laughs> All right. Now, now, but there's more. There's more. Uh, <clears throat> I met a nun who moonlighted as a bartender. Oh, she well, was that. The, I'm not finished yet. Oh, now you ruined my timing. <laughs> I'll have to start over. Oh, jeez. I'm sending you back to the fifth grade. Oh. All right. <clears throat> I met a nun who moonlighted as a bartender. She was the very best at her job, bar none. The very, uh, but I'm uh, very I'm good. Trying. Very good. That all right, all right. Now here's, here's, now here's the best one yet. Now brace yourselves. Yeah, Are you braced? Yeah, all right. Good. All right. Now, three nuns walked into a bar. The fourth one ducked. <laughs> I get it. You don't get, get, get it? I get it. You get it? I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I thought of that. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> my You're God. Fantastic. Oh, hey, well, listen, we love listen, you. We love you, Reverend Mother. Tom's Reverend Mother. We love you so much. Well, thank you. You know, I you know, I haven't yet retired, you know. I, I I'm just enjoying the new rules of, of being a nun under Vatican III. There is what? Well, is what, there is no bad well, what was Sister Sister Mary Hubert? She told me all about it. You know that lovely new Pope we've got. He's such a cutie, that Saint Francis. Well, he's so dear. He loosened up all the restrictions of a nun's duties. Oh now we can kick our shoes off, take oh our habits God. off, and oh no. and. What? No, 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 Mother Superior, no, there is no Vatican III. Who Vatican? told you that? She played a trick on you. Who, who's she? Who told you? Hubert! That, that, Sister Mary Hubert told me that. You don't what? mean. She no. didn't. There's, there's no Vatican III? There's no such thing. <sighs> Hubert! Hubert! I'm going to shake my fist at her. That'll show her. No, no, just you know. wait. Just you wait. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just yeah. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay, well. All right. That's it. That, that's it for Mother Superior. Bye, Bye Sister, Sister Maria. Maria. Gina. All we're right. back. We're going to pass it off to, back, to, back to Don. Don is a special guest. He's going to uh, talk to our other special guest. So we're going to pass it right off to Don. And, oh. uh, and thank you, Reverend Mother, wherever you may end, end up. up. <laughs> on it. Go. <laughs> Oh, John, crackety, crackety. Uh oh, can you guys hear me? I do. Yeah, uh oh, sounds like I wondered if this was going to happen. Testing one, two. We hear you. We hear you. We hear you. I can, yeah, but I can't hear you through these, which means everything's kind of a little bit weird here. Let's see. Everybody take your drama mean. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, I may not be able to do my second song uh, the way this is going out. But what, you guys can hear me, which is great. And so what I would like to do right now is we have a very special guest to bring on, which is our uh, our good friend, Jill O'Malley. Jill O'Malley was in a production of A Grand Night for Singing. And that was uh, also in 2010. And we, we had a, a wonderful time with her. Is Jill there? I'm here. Hi, Don. Oh, well, hey, I, um, unfortunately, I can't hear you. Hang on a second. Let me see what I can do here. Oh, my gosh. I was wondering if this was going to happen, and, and it is. And so it is. Hang on. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to unplug this. Are you there? I'm here. Okay. Hang on a second. Do you hear oh, me? Oh, my goodness. Hang on a second here. What am I doing? Okay. <laughs> It's all me. And there we go. You can hear me now, right? I can hear you. I've been able to hear you. <laughs> You've been able to hear me. I haven't been able to hear you. There Something you go. Something with the uh, going out of a room into another. And here we are, technical, technical difficulties always here. But uh, how are you doing, Jill? I'm doing great, Don, and now you are too, because we can hear each other. <laughs> now we can hear each other, yeah, I'm, I'm doing much great. You look beautiful, honey. Well, Every thank you. You're yeah. looking pretty great yourself. Uh, no, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> oh, you know you love it. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that was so much fun. 2010, uh, Grand Night for Singing. We got to be there on tap dancing away on the stage. You were a honey bun. Wasn't that, that fun? That was so much fun. And so uh, much fun. I loved it. That was that was a lot. I mean, such great music, right? I mean, you don't really yes. get I mean always great to be able to delve into those great lyrics and the lush yes. melodies of Rogers and Hammerstein. I mean Oh, it's it's wonderful music, yes. Yeah. How many of the of those shows have you done outside of the Grand Eye for Singing when we did the whole review? Have you done any of the Roger and Hammerstein musicals together? I yes, I have. I've I've done uh, South Pacific. I've done Oklahoma. I've done I think everything they've ever written. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've I've had some really amazing roles in my life. I've been very fortunate to be cast in some fun, fun things. Yes. Yeah. And you were recently in was Mamma Mia the last production that you did recently? Well, no, actually in December I did Cinderella. 
and it's the Broadway version, the new version, and I was the evil stepmother. And right. it was fun. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the month before that, I did Mamma Mia. I played Tanya, the yeah. one that kind of has the most fun, you know. Some people thought it was typecasting, and maybe it was. I don't know. And then right before that, I did Into the Woods, and I was the witch. So I guess versatility is there. <laughs> <laughs> That's another great, I mean, Stephen Sondheim, Into the Woods. Oh, that probably to date was the hardest role that I've ever done, just because of the, you know, the prosthetic, the mask that you put on your face and having to change clothes in a matter of two or three seconds. And, uh, but it was, it was very worthwhile and I enjoyed it. Absolutely. Um, actually, I'm going to do, try one thing real quick. Hang on just a second. Okay. I thought about something. I just thought about something. Okay. Okay, and you can still hear me, yes? I still hear you, Don. And you still hear me, and if I do this, and I do this. Can you hear me? And can, can you hear me now? Can you, I can hear you now. <laughs> I tried to do a technical thing and I was wrong. <laughs> you know was... what, nobody has ever told me they couldn't hear me before. It's oh like, no, no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um with uh with all of the uh the song all the shows you've done so many so shows but something else that you've also done and you were able to kind of transition this all the singing i think you're uh you you, you were a singer for uh even when, when did you start singing uh i think when i was four for you so you've always been singing right i've always been singing yes and our fans, our, our ATI fans, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to Miss Indiana. You won the <laughs> Miss Indiana pageant. Isn't that right? I did. That's been a few years ago. My banner is just a little soiled, but yes, I did. And it was a great experience. Thank you. Well, I'm sure that must have been totally amazing. That was in the the month of July, I think it was that you won. You won. The, it uh, was I, July 9th, to be exact. And um, yeah, it was um, it was a lot of fun. It really was. It was an opportunity to have to get to perform. And I uh, probably I didn't win all of my college money, but from the money I won when I won Miss Indiana and the money I won at the Miss America pageant and then the money I made through the year for all the different. Uh, appearances I made my dad was excited because <laughs> there was oh. a lot of college paid for by this as scholarships oh. oh my gosh what a gift that is I'm, I mean there's so many people that I mean we've seen I mean I think I think had the pageantry I read somewhere that um it's been I mean not necessarily like Miss Indiana or Miss America pageant or anything like that but but as far as these type of things the lore is it went all the way back to the Greek days of what were they saying about, uh, I read it, what they applied, they implied that Al Alexandros, he called it, settled a dispute between these goddesses of which one's the most beautiful of Hera or Aphrodite or Athena, <laughs> they had to go through all this stuff. Anyway, but the things that we've learned so much, you know, some people, so many, uh, some people think that pageantry is, is so much just about the beauty, but there's so much more to what this instills, the type of, um, the right. Educational opportunities for these young women, these leadership roles to be spokespeople for uh, a community service type of things. Talk to us about what, who, who, who are the ones that kind of you looked up to, and then what was it like for you to also be a mentor to these younger women who came after you? Well, I looked up to a lot of different people, mostly musical theater. Uh, stars, you know, and I, I really knew that I wanted to do maybe not professionally, but that had to be a part of my life. And when I was working towards the pageants at that point in time, talent was 50% of what you did. And so, I mean, they're actually looking for a composite. But if you find somebody that is just this gorgeous girl that walks in and she doesn't do a talent well, then she's not going to win. So it's really not a beauty pageant. It's a scholarship pageant. And it's gotten more like that through the years. Um, when I'm talking to girls that are in pageants now, um, and I do think it's fun to coach them because they're, they're young and you know they're, they're just talented and gorgeous. Um, the main thing is to 
prepare, prepare, prepare. You know, you prepare your talent so you know exactly what you're going to do. And when you get up on that stage, you can sell it. You prepare, um, you, you read a lot. You need to know what's going on in the world. You need to know current events. You need to work on your wardrobe. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but you have to have things that accentuate the positive. And I've seen so many girls go to the Miss America pageant and they get there, they have a fabulous talent. They're beautiful girls, but their clothes look like they're in their 60s when they're 20. You know, so they need some, they need some coaching. And, and most of the state pageants have that. Uh, but pre preparation is so important. And then once you prepare, it's kind of like if you take a test and you've studied and you've studied and you know you did well, once you get all the preparedness out of the way, then just enjoy yourself because it's so much fun. And if I'm, you love to perform, you're up there on that huge stage with a full orchestra. The runway is like the, the length of your hometown and it's just fun. So yeah, um, yeah I, it was a great experience for me. That's gotta be a really different, I mean, it's good to transition that into performing too, because yes. I, when you're on stage and you're playing a role there everybody is watching you but they're following that story whereas with pageantry and and and, and in a pageant everybody is looking at you and they're sizing you up against all of the others how do you get your mind out of that it's like i'm being judged with everything i mean you know it's that's tough, well, that's gonna be tough. yeah it is but i was really really young i was just old enough to compete and I think at the state level, that was very, very good for me because I was mature. My, I'm an only child. My mom and dad were older when I was born. I was kind of born older. And so I think that really helped me. But once I got to the Miss America pageant and I did fine, I did well, it was a wonderful experience, but girls were 26, 27, you know, 22. And I was, I was so young. I don't think I knew to be nervous. Oh boy, what a blessing. Is that I it, really it, don't. I just yeah. knew I loved to perform. I do you, did you ever see the musical The Fantastics? Oh yes, what a beautiful yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, uh the part where the the girl says, I'm 16 years old and every day something happens to me. And at the time I was 18, but I did that. Uh, there was a little monologue, then there was a part of the song, then there was a dance break, you know, I could get a little jiggy with it, and then I ended on a high A. I mean, what more do you want? <laughs> so it was just so much fun. That is, that's a great, uh, Tom Jones and Harvey Schmidt, beautiful, yeah. poetic too. Very, yes. uh, the reason that show lasted so long off-Broadway, the longest, I mean, it has all the records for off-Broadway, uh, the length and duration of that and such beautiful beautiful work and how cool to be able to share that too and 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 uh, the, your show your versatility of all right of that. right That's now important. it was it was a great experience thanks for Amazing. asking sure no yeah absolutely no so jill O'Malley, miss indiana from <laughs> july and wow what a treat to have you also on our stage and you're just Thank such a dear friend we love you and Dennis oh Olin. love you Dennis too Dennis. don it was a great experience. Good, 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 good. Well, thank you so much. We'll be, we'll come all back and we'll all chat and catch up to see how everybody's doing after. Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as I as we were going through, I'm I, I could try to go punt and go to my old style of doing this rather than through this, but um, I think it might take too terribly long, and I might not be able to. I, I don't know lose everybody's uh, attention through this. But um, this has been a, lo a lovely evening of being able, I was going to do a, a tune of uh, 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 Surrey with the fringe on top is what I was going to do from Oklahoma. But before, before we go away from that and bring everybody in, I was going through my uh, archives and, and stuff that I have here at home. And here, well, here is the original program of Oklahoma. Oh. This is what it looked like, you guys. This is actually not from the Broadway production. It is from the first national tour. And I mean, it's just, it's so cool. And this was, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the leaflet that was consolidated. Yes, it's oh, it's in the okay, see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this was done in 1947. This is February 17th for February 22nd, 1947 by the National, by the Theater Guild National Company. Um, 
So I don't know. It's it's so cool to be able to look at what what was originally done, all the pictures from the original first national production of Oklahoma, which is just such a landmark piece. 1943 uh, also won a special Pulitzer Prize uh, in 1944 for um, for this, and it's based on, of course, it's music by Richard Rodgers and and lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein the, the second, and uh, based on Green Grow the Lilacs by uh, Lillian. Lynn Riggs, Lynn Riggs, Lynn Riggs, and that's based on the play of that. So, um, so anyway, I was going to sing the song, but due to technical difficulties, I can tell I'm out of the loop as to how my system works in with this. So, um, but what we're going to do right now, I'm going to, we didn't have a winner last week, but we're going to do a trivia and trivia for uh, two tickets, two vouchers to an ATI production of our 2020-21 season. And uh, it's a value of $90, but uh, I think it might be a little bit more than $90. But um, if you can answer the first one, we have Meg Osborne at the keyboard. And uh, she is going to get the, first, the person who gets the first answer. And this is a pretty easy one. It's a pretty easy one for you guys to go with. Um, we were just I was just talking to a wonderful Jill O'Malley. And what title, what special title does she hold and what month of the year did she win this year? Let's get that in there. And the first one to win, Meg Osborne, will um, will uh, be able to let you know that you're the winner of two vouchers to an ATI production for our 2020-21 season. So good luck. And on that note, I would like to bring everybody back in so we can all catch up with everybody and see how everybody's doing. I'm gonna screw it up. There we go. So, all right, there's Mr. B. And what did you say, Cindy? I'm going to gallery here so there I can see everybody. Here. And I hello. Easy. What's going on, Babbage? Easy, Babbage. Babbage. Holy Christian moly! Brothers. Christian brothers. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, our mother superior is Deborah Babbage, very very old and dear friend of mine. You're very very um, old. That's not nice. To well, say. old. We've been friends a long time. <laughs> yeah. Been friends a long time. Yeah. We're not very old. We're not very old. We've been friends for a long time. Oh, yeah. It's an old. <laughs> yeah. Let me say very, very. Old. Let me. I was twelve and Judy was eight. I was. <laughs> I was. I was. I was, I was three. <laughs> uh, Steph Babbage and I were, they were old friends. We met in nineteen eighty nine, and at the New Jersey Shakespeare Festival, where we worked like dogs. And no Cindy cracked me up on stage every chance she could. <laughs> yes. I, in between, I remembered my lines. But, uh, Deborah actually played uh, Reverend Mother in our production of Nonsense. She played Sister Mary Regina. She was she was great. She's a great talent. She's a great friend. Thank you for being on with us tonight, Deborah. Oh, it was my absolute pleasure. Anything I could do <laughs> to help out the cause. <laughs> was it Regina or Regina? Uh, I'm surprised at you, Miss Fitzgerald. Regina <laughs> is a city in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great musical nonsense um, my, my, my dad grew up in parochial school so he really appreciated all of the clickers and all of the uh, uh, catechism and Catholicism oh, Mr. B, Mr. B, you tell a video clicker I, Mr. B doesn't know anything about parochial school oh, do you? Mr. Mr. Person I know. Six, 16 years of Catholic education Oh, cool. I survived. I'm married to a Catholic. That's right, you are. That counts. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I, I thought he'd be stopping by, but he hasn't. Oh, we he got to by. What, what's up with Dennis O'Malley? What's going on with him? Uh, well, he came past a couple times, and it just went, oh, my goodness. I'm coming around the corner right now in his bright orange. Right on cue. How we doing, folks? There he is. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Dennis O'Malley, how, how's your time step doing? You taught me everything I know about tap dancing, right? Oh, I still got it done. I got my hip surgery uh, uh, last September, and I'm, I'm better than ever. And by the way, uh, and I know uh, the, uh, the winner of this question gets this big pen. <laughs> what month was I prom king? What month were you prom king? Yes, <laughs> yes. Ooh, wow, let's see. Dennis is a little needy. He needs some <laughs> attention. You know, if I get a little, then it's his turn. So, 
Dennis, wait, where'd he go? He left. He left. He left. He remembers taking. Yeah, he comes and goes, kind of like the Indiana weather. It's like, what? What? Yes. There goes in. He there flows goes in, in and out. <laughs> Dennis has been a very good boy. We have found out that we really do like each other and that we can live together. We were always worried about when we retire, but yeah. I think it's going to be good. That's good because this is a true test. I have heard some stories of some friends that right. sometimes this is the true test. Either you're going to be like, you know what? I think we, I think we're going to make it or... <laughs> It could go the other way. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. My stove is overactive. I've not cooked this much in my entire life. Oh, me too. Me too. And now, did Dennis, did Dennis did the one video, which we want to talk about, that I want to talk to him about. That yes. That dance video at the very end of one of ours. What was that? It was the, that the, it was the actual. It was the archive for Grand Night for Singing. And he did. Yes. Video. And he got Yes. It. He was doing it at, on our driveway just a couple days ago. So he is in practice. Okay, and, you know, good. he was also in Ruthless, the musical. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, when he a, said, honey, I'm The cameo home. appearance was amazing. Yes, it was. And he will do any show where he only has one line. He said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And if you can throw in a time step. That's you might even throw in a time step. Great. Yeah. Yep. Hey, hey, Jill. Yes. Uh, I have a question. It's for Dennis, but you probably know. How many baseball hats does the man own? Oh, my goodness. I would say a thousand. Yeah. Maybe probably. more. I, he has them. Uh, we In our lower level, we have the bulkhead. It's, I think it's every six inches at the very top. It's not my decorating is a different ball cap <laughs> and um i i don't know i mean we have five grandsons so they actually do talk about who gets all the baseball caps but i wish they'd take them early <laughs> <laughs> so that's where they are i think it's i think it's impressive man. i think it's impressive oh, yeah. uh deb what yes. i would like you to tell everyone what you're actually sitting in front of i want to know everything about you right now I, yeah, I wasn't able to listen to your whole segment. All of a sudden, I was like, there's not, so I have to go back and watch this just to see what I talked about. Uh, this is uh, classic interior decorating circa 1967. Our, our home was a model home in, in, in those days, and uh, it, all the interior decorating was done in a theme of green and blue. So, uh, uh, this is actually my mom's bedroom. She and I, we, I, I look after her and, uh, and she just loves it. So we've kept it all these years. Oh, I love it. Awesome. <laughs> it looks great. Where, 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 whereabouts are you right now? Are, where are you I'm, living? I'm, I'm in Greendale, uh, Wisconsin, which is a suburb of Milwaukee. Okay. Awesome. 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 <laughs> you were hysterical as Mother Superior. Wow. I don't think I've ever laughed as hard. I mean, and that whole process of what you guys were going through, because there's, I mean, it's scripted, but you also had some leeway to kind of come up with your own stuff, right? Well, I, I remember that time as, I call it non-boot camp, because we, it was so intense, and virtually everybody was in every scene, and uh, all, I, I had a little time to... Uh, sort of uh, build up to the rehearsal. I was working two jobs right before the rehearsal started. And so I could squeeze in some study before the rehearsals began. But, uh, um, but honestly, it was it, it, it was so intense. And, and Cindy and Judy knew the show backwards and forwards, which made it so much easier. But uh, uh, Judy was our director and Cindy was our choreographer, but uh, it was, Honestly, yeah, I have a whole new respect, a whole, whole new respect for, for nuns. Uh, honestly, um, it's, it was such a challenge, I, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. And, and all of those gals, we keep in touch, and uh, uh, which is lovely. So talented, all of them. I can't say yet. I'll wait. Uh, there's no, no, a friend. Sorry, Judy. I'm just going to raise my hand. I want to say that one of the funniest things in the world 
is that we did spotlight at um, Clues Hall. And I don't know if you remember Babbage, but you're like, it's Klaus. Oh, yeah. Klaus Hall. <laughs> and then Claire Wilshire, Claire Wilshire, who is so funny. Oh my God. She's like, Mother Claire, I think it's Clues. Klaus. <laughs> oh my God. It was so funny. Oh my God. It was so See, you know, I'm a stickler for phonics. <laughs> <laughs> You might, you might appreciate this story. I, I, I had a friend of mine, uh, Nancy Carroll, who is one of the nuns also with Dan Dawkins and everything like that. So Nancy told me the story, you know, that uh, the women who did nonsense so much, they had their own habit. Like they owned their own, right? And so she got an emergency call to go out and do a production of nonsense out regionally because somebody broke their ankle and she had to go out for Mother, Mother Superior. So she... She's like, okay, and they're like, we got your flight flight ready. Go to the airport. Just go go to the pack. Go to the airport. We got it. We have a performance. Like I don't know. It was early in the morning. You have to get that night. So she drives to the airport. She has her carry on bag. She just has enough time for a carry on. She puts her habit in the carry on bag. She gets on the plane. She sits down on the plane. And once they're up, and the bing, you can get up and go about. She gets up, goes to the restroom with her bag. In the restroom, she changes into her <laughs> habit and comes back and sits down because she has to get off the plane and go straight to the theater. Right. She gets out of the restroom in her habit now and she sits down next to the gentleman that she was rock line with and the guy looks at her and goes, one hell of a weekend, huh, not, huh sis? <laughs> Carol was the best, the best, the best. Yeah, that's a great story, man. True story. Hey, story. hey, Mr. B. Mr. Yes. B, your repertoire tonight was one Who's of my favorites. Oh, Thank you. You whipped in that all that crazy <laughs> hand hand work you put in there. You so love the glissandos, man. He is like, uh, yeah, I love to do those. <laughs> <laughs> you use your thumb or the back of your hand? How do you? I can't show you which finger I use, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it works. It certainly does. It works really well. Quiet, man. Uh, how's the lovely PJ? My fir uh, my very first wife. Yeah, she's doing yes. Fine. First wife, yes, and still wife. Yeah. She she got the cast she got the cast off today after seven weeks. Yay! Oh, sure she has one week in the boot and then some minor surgery to remove the screws and then probably by next week she'll be okay. Oh, good. 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 So, well, good. I love the PJ as well. Excellent. Well, you guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, like Cindy said, we won't be back next weekend, but we will definitely, uh, we'll let you guys know when we are back. Uh, we'll be sending out uh, through our Facebook and, and social media, as well as through email and stuff like that. So keep up to date with us at Actors Theatre of Indiana on our ATI Facebook page. And we look forward to another episode where we'll get, tell you about our 2011 season, which is when we also started doing our actual 2011-2012 season, our actual subscription season. A whole bunch that we was going on during that time. And we'll be doing that next when we come back. So... Until then, please, everybody, take care of yourselves and each other. And again, thanks so much for having inviting ATI into your homes. Good night. Thanks so much, Jill. Good night. Thanks, 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 Than